today on Film Insights. I have a special treat for you as I got to sit down with the incredibly talented Jackie Ann Chen to discuss his cinematography in his latest project, which you may have already seen. It's Jesse Reyes' new music video, No One's in the Room, and the cinematography is incredible. A bit about Jack. Jack was born in China and came to Canada and was immersed in the English as a Second Language program, or ESL. And naturally in school, he gravitated towards subjects like mathematics and music, for they used their own language for the subject, and it wasn't as hard for someone struggling with a language barrier. But like math and music, he found it easy to connect with other people while experiencing movies and photographs because them too had this different type of language, and the genuine human emotions that come from these films and, and pictures that people see are universal in understanding. Jack was also quick to get into sports, particularly volleyball and fencing. He describes himself as the kid on the team that always brought his camera to every practice and taking loads of pictures all the time whenever he wasn't playing. Always gravitating towards more candid shots that weren't quite the picture-perfect posing images, but rather he was more interested in capturing moments in time. It's incredible to me to think that even at this early stage before he was really involved in film, he was already trying to tell stories, even with just one frame to work with. He credits his early involvement in sports to help developing his key skills such as leadership and responsibility, and he compares having the team captain role on his volleyball team to being the cinematographer for a camera team. And that's really what it is, a team where every single member of the camera team is just as important to make sure that everyone has an overall group success, just like in sports. Jack Yanchen is an extremely intelligent individual, and his work is absolutely stunning. I hope you enjoy our chat. So, you're the cinematographer, and most people have a general understanding of what that is. You're the one filming the actual shots. But you also had a director, Emma Higgins, and you had a creative director, Peter Huang. Can you please tell me a little bit about what the creative process between the three of you was like, and... And what do you specifically, as the cinematographer, kind of bring to this three-man team that contributes to what we end up seeing in the video in the end? Yeah, so it was very interesting on the way um, this whole thing was done because um, Jesse Reyes, I guess, like last year had a, um, I guess, like just like a whole, like, I guess, like a slew of music video. Um, also like I think like the idea was like almost like one of the old school like rock operas like you would see right so like everything sort of like has to like flow into like each of the other projects and so like we ended up having um, Peter which I think also does like a lot of her videos as well and he's just like honestly has like this like amazing creative view and he was sort of just like the overview on like the general direction and um, he ended up collaborating with uh, just like a lot of like other directors who like you know what I mean like um had the ideas to sort of like take like each concepts to part and the whole project was like an over overall uh, encompassing project was that like you were there to execute sort of like each song but it still has to like flow within like a certain like you know narrative of sorts I guess like with um you know all like I think like there was like I think they totally did like a total of like something like 12 or 14 of them like in a row so it all has to fit like within like a flow you know what I mean so that was just like a very interesting thing to kind of go about um and then um for certain songs and certain stories um I think like especially for this one it was very personal to Emma's sort of um uh, I guess like way of seeing seeing things and growing up and all that and so I think like she sort of took like the overall themes in this song and kind of put her own take on it, which she kind of like brought to me. And it was also my job to kind of like look through, I guess, like what they wanted to think about and um, accomplish and then taking sort of like a bit of my sensibilities. And, you know, hopefully we got something cool out of it, you know what I mean? But yeah, it was very much uh, of that. So I guess like in my role and all this sort of thing was just to make sure like, yeah, like all these things sort of fit like the overall like narrative of the project, but also, you know, we could do our very best to tell, like, our very specific story, you know? Yeah, and 
the story and the lyrics, it's a uh, very intense subject matter. A lot of people can relate to it. You see all throughout the comments, people really connecting with this song, of course, having to do with uh, societal pressure to be one way or another and uh, people's challenges with faith and, and how they're being judged by the people around them. But uh, there's a lot of hypocrisy in that as well. And uh, one thing that this video kind of does to take us even further is... Uh, it breaks the fourth wall. There's a scene in the church where it's someone's called cut, and we see that these themes that uh, Jesse is singing about uh, not just apply to the everyman, but they're also applying to her in her sort of celebral world where, hey, I'm, uh, you know, experiencing all these wonderful things about being a celebrity, but there's also all this hardship, and she's kind of scrolling through these messages, and although there are a few nice ones, even when you're in such a wonderful position, there's all sorts of pressure and hatred that comes with that. So it really helps, like, kind of take you out of, oh, this is a beautiful music video, yada, yada, yada. But this is how someone's truly feeling. Yeah, so, like, that was actually one of, like, my favorite parts of the whole thing. And we were talking about, like, what is some of the best way to represent that? And I remember, like, having this, like, amazing collaborative, like, chat with our, our director, Emma. And, like, I love working with her because, like, she always, like, sort of, you know... I guess like goes out of her way to like kind of push you to be better and like figure out ideas that's like hasn't done before and everything. And so like, we just said that like, Hey, you know, like all these people uh, that were shooting, especially Jesse too, like they're sort of like bearing their souls and everything like, you know, out there. Like, why don't we sort of like play with the same idea? You know what I mean? The idea that like, once you kind of call cut, it's like, what does it look like? So it's like almost like a little like BTS video for like a second like kind of went we went like a little bit meta and like the whole idea was just like hey you call cut and like the city cam operator kind of like puts it down you know and you kind of just get to see the in between workings of like how crazy like this like supposedly like glamorous film world is to be right because um i think like to the layman audience listening out there like you know you never think that like hey like a four minute video or like a like a 30 second commercial like it didn't take like 30 seconds to record something right so it's just like all that all that like it kind of like pulls the curtain back and sees like hey like all the work that went into creating something um and i think also just like she was so brave into like using actual comments and twitter and messages about like even like some of like the not so nice stuff that they said and to be honest that was just like a really cool moment of like uh people showing off their psyche and their like identity and i was just like really into that yeah, I, I thought that it was extremely clever. It really breaks the just kind of uh, passive listener and, and really forces you to engage with the content and, and sort of think about what, what's actually being said. Um, now, I sort of want to take us on a, a little bit of a chronological journey. Uh, of course. Let's talk about the pre-production process. I imagine you guys had a lot of tech scouts and prep days to familiarize yourself with the beautiful locations that you had to work with. Yeah, so I mean, it all starts with like, you know, the, I guess like the co the first like the creative treatment followed by the director's treatment, which is sort of like just like, hey, like, this is our overall vision of the video. This is like how it should flow. These are like the, the colors like these are like, you know, our choices that we want to make. And these are also like the, the various like other, um, you know, scenes. And it's like, it's like also like the, the I think the challenging part of uh, coming from I guess like a producerial point of view and I'm sure you could something like you can appreciate is like we needed you know all these like kind of live like spaces but we also almost need something like a studio vibe going with it and it's like how do we combine sort of everything into like a single day you know what I mean so like I think like one of the biggest things that we ended up doing I guess like from a logistical standpoint was just like looking at like a lot of locations that could physically you know give us like what we're looking for and for some reason, I guess like a lot of church spaces um, tended to, you know, have like a lot of that. Cause like, there's also the altar, but there's usually like a gymnasium, like a cafeteria area. And like, they always have like some of these like older, like um, I would say like just like dressing rooms or even just like other like little classroom settings, right? And I guess like with some like ingenuity and like set deck and some lighting, of course, um, you know, you could definitely turn that into like something else that you know, you, something else that like, it might not be right there, but it's just like suddenly it has this vibe and energy. And so we ended up like uh, looking at a bunch of churches, but our producer, Allison Honey Woods, um, she ended up like finding like a couple of spots. Um, and I think like she ended up actually finding this one church that was just like perfect. Um, and so like, 
I guess like when we walked in there, we started like imagining like, oh, these are the moments that like we could do this, this in this location with the altar. We could do like this and this. And oh, like we saw this like beautiful, like kind of like uh, bush area, you know? And we thought like, oh, what if we like put a pool there and like added a couple of things here and there. And like, that could be like really awesome. And we could like maybe even pull off like the whole like studio style setup scene, which is like her, you know, kind of falling into the, the block of this like with the water and stuff like that and we just like ended up like i guess like starting from like oh like oh my god like how we're gonna do this or how we're gonna create all these to like oh like okay it can happen like what if did it like this and that and i guess like through a lot of collaboration and chatting with our department heads and just thinking about like hey like oh, what if we did this and just chatting and sharing a lot of ideas like which is like we were thinking like oh okay like you know this is probably like the spot and style and I guess like we just like, kind of really lean to lean into it and like you know made some choices of course and yeah you know like kind of that was just like the natural spot that we found and it just like it just kind of like worked perfect for exactly what this was supposed to be so you mentioned uh a single day in a single location are you saying that so everything was filmed in one day and all those shots were created in the oh, same yeah, location that was a that was a very challenging thing that we had to do, which is essentially we had to, because of the amount of like art department work and like lighting and stuff like that, uh, that entire video was shot in a single day in a single location. Wow, that's crazy. I would have thought at least the uh, scene where she's in the water would have had some sort of uh, studio aspect like you had mentioned. Uh, one thing that I want to ask, so you're running around this location, you're looking at all the areas and your department heads, you're all thinking, oh, well, maybe we can do it this way. Maybe we can do it this way. Do you have a favorite moment of discovery when you were learning about your locations? Maybe you walked into a room and you thought, I know exactly what I want to do in this room. I guess like one of the biggest things was like for me was just like, I always felt like, I guess like I'm drawn to sort of like faded spaces or just, or just like spaces or like rooms, like naturally where um, I guess like you could sense like there's like the energy of this, the place like has like a lot of history or like, it's probably seen like a lot of like, you know, uses or, you know what I mean? Like you could just tell like there was like a lot of like things, right? And I don't know, like for me, it was just like when we first walked into the cafeteria spot and also like, I guess the set that became our dressing room, it was just like, we just kind of like looked at this one spot and I don't know, like for us, it was more like instinctual. Like we, we just felt like we were drawn to the space. We felt like there's a lot of, you know, like histories and like people probably had like a lot of classes there and like, sure, it was supposed to be just this room, but like we also like, I guess like we're able to find like, a, I guess like a lot of beauty, you know, in that world without like really kind of seeing it at the first sight, right? Cause like most of the time, like we walked into like that whole like beginning area with like, um, with like the, the the stage and stuff with the little boy dancing that, that, that apparently that was supposed to be like a cafeteria spot and then like we we saw a couple of tables set up and we we're just like oh like but what if you know we did this with it you know and it, it just like it was just one of those things where I guess like it was a little bit like instinctual as well and we were just both drawn to certain energies that was kind of like pulling us to this like style and we're like hey well what if we put this actor there and you know so that's kind of like how we ended up picking some of the spots. That, that's incredible. I would have no idea there was a cafeteria. It really did feel kind of like, especially when he was dancing, uh, it really felt like we were in sort of like a dance studio almost. He kind of, you know, encompassed the space um, with him moving, the camera moving. Was there any sort of images that you had come up with your mind early in the production that you felt like you really campaigned to make sure they arrived in the final project? Uh, or were most of these kind of images sort of revealed organically whilst the story was being unraveled and through the filming process? Well, there's definitely a bit of both, but I think like one of our biggest influences, like outside of like the whole meta-ness of just like creating like this video was also that painting, um, I think Ophelia and the Lilies, um, if you want to kind of like Google, Google that a little bit, but it's like a very famous painting, which is depicts um, Ophelia, which is from, um, I guess like Hamlet, uh, on her like kind of suicide like at the end of the whole play and she kind of goes mad and everything like that you know what I mean and so we we know that like that was like a lot of like our inspiration like from the studio stuff that it also came but I think like another big influence I think just even like for me personally after like chatting about it, it was just like the film Ladybird and you know by Greta, Greta Gerwig I think it was the director and like we just like definitely just kind of lean on like their color palettes vibes and you know, we, we talked about like, how are we gonna make sort of all the scenes flow with each other? And we talked about like, okay, well, like, well, you, you're gonna 
do a lot of like work with Steadicam and like have like a very just like narrative-y uh, way to kind of like tell this story. So there was definitely like a lot of that as well. Um, but I think the toughest part was definitely like getting the whole like, oh, like the Ophelia and the Lilies vibe. And like, she was also like lit a certain way, like in the painting, like if you looked it up, like very kind of like, you know, beauty style, like um, sort of like, you know, you know, like very ink inky. It's almost like the, the light was like sticky on like the substance and it like didn't necessarily like, you know, go anywhere else and all the colors are very deliberate. So it was just definitely like a very challenge, but we thought that like, it was just really cool and we wanted to like make that happen. Now, now you talked about the camera work, the camera's constantly moving. Before we continue with all these creative choices, um, let's take a second to uh, acknowledge the technical aspect. The film uh, shot on your pride and joy, I imagine uh, your equipment. Uh, for our more technical listeners, l please let us know about the tech behind uh, the film, the camera you were using, maybe some of the equipment that went into creating this project. Yeah, well, it actually wasn't my equipment, but it was more just like a bunch of like equipment that was ripe for the project. Um, but like, we always knew that like we wanted to go with a steady cam um, for the whole like visuals of it. And then the other thing that I know that like Emma was really into was the, um, the idea of like putting a zoom lens on a steady cam and being able to like remotely control it just to be able to, you know, in certain moments, like when you kind of dolly in, or I guess like steady cam dolly in, but like for all these purposes where you kind of like move forward and be able to like zoom back or like zoom forward to get certain moments. And also just like from like a logistic point of view, like be able to get like certain compositions because so much of the songs were based on lyric beats and you had to deliver like a certain keyframe or certain visual at like this moment. And so it definitely kind of like helped us with a little bit of that as well. Um, but yeah, no, it was just mostly like the whole very like, um, you know, we shot um, Aerie Alexa with a Steadicam. Um, we had like a, I think the lens was like a lightweight Zeiss, which was also like a lot of the glass that like we just, just like looked up on some of our like references and influences. And I did like my whole like researching and whatever. And like, it just like seems like that was like some of the combos and wanted to like lean into some of the looks. And then like lighting wise, like we just like really went for super naturalistic. Um, obviously we needed like a lot of, extra lighting and stuff like for for the ratios to be able to get like the small the slow motions that we want or like um being able to pump like a lot of light into like a um um like an ultra bounce like a uh, book light situation um to get like the certain quality for like the inky feel of like the studio set um there were a lot of technical challenges but it's mostly just like we wanted to lean into something very um naturalistic looking um paying careful attention to colors but also yeah, definitely be able to just like have a moving camera, like a decent amount of time to be able to like flow within the certain scenes, but also just be able to deliver like certain keyframes at the right moment. Yeah, the, one of the, I think, most active scenes is when we follow our sort of B story character being the little boy um, into the chapel. He walks around and uh, you focus on Jesse, you sort of go behind her and we really get shown the entire location. So, uh, you know, me as a film head, I'm starting to think immediately, well, where's all the crew? It must be a really skeleton <laughs> crew or maybe everyone's hiding around the corner um, controlling the zoom on, on on a remote zoom or controlling the focus and whatever that may be. Um, but uh, did you have to uh, do that a lot where like the crew would be shoved somewhere else because the, there's so much movement that you can't corner a certain area off? I mean, there was definitely like um, like a little dance that had to be involved, um, and like people were like hiding underneath them, um, you know, the pews and all that. <laughs> um, and I think like one of the words like they said it was like, "Hey, is there any way we can shoot 360?" And I'm like, "Well, that might be difficult, based on like the certain logistics of the location, um, and such, especially just like being like you know working with Steadicam and needing to see so much so fast, right? Well, one of the challenges we had was like we were limited into like how much actual lights." inside that we're like even like allowed to put in because like you know uh so we decided that okay we're gonna try to shoot this like maybe 270 degrees or so on and so forth and like figure okay well like maybe in this corner everybody can hide or whatever and we can like you know maybe have like a big like stand uh like a big combo stand with like a like a big pipe running through it and it, like it all has to live in the air because obviously it would like with um a location like that you weren't allowed to drill holes into the wall into like the walls you weren't allowed to like you know 
you, you know, we didn't have the luxury of like a whole pre-rig where like, you know, a crew would come in and like literally fly pipes and stuff in the air and like, you know, put your lights in like the right positions, right? Like we just like had that one day. And so like a lot of planning that we had to do to sort of like make that happen, you know? And I just say, hey, like I lean also super hard on my gaffer, Dakota and Azuka and our key grip by Boyan Medic to be able to essentially like, hey, it's like, and like half the times I felt like really bad because I'm like making almost like an impossible ask. Like, hey, you know, I need this light right here, but it needs to be this high up. And also like, we can't see any stands and I also need this quality. And they just like, look at me like, oh man, like, thanks dude. And then like, you know, we sort of like went into our thing and figured it out. So I, I love the- It was definitely a dance. Um, but <laughs> I think what we try to do though, like for the most part was just like using bigger sources outside of the windows at least so that like worst case scenario you could always like look at a window but like you would almost buy that you know obviously i think like for the film heads and stuff like that you could tell like oh maybe like they put a light there or something right but that was sort of like the philosophy behind it was just like bigger sources with the correct with the correct uh, quality outside of the set to sort of like get the mood and tone and you know the color tones and all that kind of stuff into it and so that we could be as free as possible and be able to like just find moments you know yeah, and and I love the contrast between uh, this light needs to be exactly here, nothing can be seen, and then maybe a few <laughs> shots later, okay, make everything visual. We need to make sure that everything is caught in frame. Uh, this is, might be a little bit of a silly question, but when we do see the crew in our third wall breaking, our fourth wall breaking shots, are those actual members of the crew? Oh, they're actual members of the crew, yeah. And then... Um... <laughs> Yeah, so like Peter actually made an appearance in that too. Like uh, he's the person, he's the gentleman, um, I think like going in and like chatting with Jesse for like some bit of direction. I think like a lot of our crew members are actually like really shy, but if you actually like did the whole turnaround, you actually like notice me and Emma, our director, like just like hiding in the corner, um, like by a monitor. Um, but we also like wanted like, you know, certain like people to reflect like sort of like how we see like, um, a film crew, crew ship progress and you know kind of go towards right because like right now especially if, like with the current changes like we just like want to see more diversity and stuff like that so but yeah like a lot of the people you saw was actually our um, entire crew and I did remember that like our production coordinator was just like okay uh yeah that shot okay great everybody like you need to send your releases right now like what's going on so she definitely <laughs> like saw that I was just like oh whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. no one told me about this it's a paperwork but, nightmare the, the paperwork nightmare, you know, but I honestly thought that it was like, uh, just like a great moment. And I was just so glad, you know, like our director was super on board with like certain ideas and like, hey, what if we did this? And, you know, technically it's not supposed to be the most like technical way of doing things, but we're just like, you know, for anybody that's ever worked on a film set, like you totally understand how crazy like everything can get, especially in between setups. It's always just like this hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. And, you know, you always feel like, like what can we, I could, uh, what can I do be doing better? Or like, oh, like if only had like enough time to like maybe put up this one light or something like that, right? And so, I don't know, we just like wanted to capture some of that like organized chaos that was just like very much part of our, you know, everyday lives, right? So, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I think that it was, uh, it was beautifully well done. Uh, it, it's crazy to think that, uh, the crew was actually there but like you said i it's just uh, all about getting that paperwork in on time and, and the fact that you were even in it i didn't even i didn't i was oh, looking yeah. for you but i didn't think i don't think i saw you so you know what i could pro if you go to a, like i think there's like a very i'm trying to find the key frame but there's there is a key frame like in the middle of the music video um where i think like we got her posing and it's like we're looking towards the altar and all the crew is there like you can see me and emma like just kind of like hiding in our corner like just like kind of looking at our like little monitor sort of thing i'm trying to trying to find oh yeah jesse yeah um and it's it's a moment where like we actually like it was actually like a that moment we it was actually just like a moment where like we actually just rolled the camera and didn't really expect that to make it into the video but like i think what happened was like jesse just like as, as like the super talented performer that like she was just like naturally like vibe with like what we were doing and there was just like this one spotlight coming oh from i i can see you now at uh at 238 yeah, I can't even find it, but like, she just kind of like vibe with that. And I saw that, I was like, oh, like that, like, you know, I normally don't really like to kind of keep people frontally, but like, just like for some reason that just kind of like worked. And I saw that frame, I started like messing, I had the control um, on my like hand. 
Mm-hmm. And then um, Emma's right beside me on my right. And she's like also kind of fixated on her monitor, just making sure like everything is like perfect. Um, Peter actually really didn't want to be in the video, but like, no, no, you, you gotta, you gotta be in here, you know, for the thing. So we kind of like forced him to be one of the characters and it was really <laughs> funny. Cause like, he was like, just super down for what we were doing. Yeah. You um, know, people yeah. who are, you know, watching, they would think that maybe Peter's the director. He's, you know, the guy that's more prominent of the crew going and giving the direction to the <laughs> talent and standing, looking, it's, it's almost comical. He's, you know, scratching his chin while looking at the monitor. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sort no, of, um, sort of playing oh, that yeah. character. But yeah, there's definitely like a lot of collaboration and yeah, no, um, the super talented lady to my right in that photo, like, yeah, she was, very much a part of like kind of like her vision too so it's really cool to you know be able to execute that now what i want to ask about is um you mentioned briefly a little while ago that uh some of the visuals are very literal translations of the lyrics whether you're talking about oh the priest has a boyfriend show the boyfriend the nuns are smoking the weed show the nun smoking the weed but then there's all the lyrics that you have to create more of these sort of poetic representations of what what's being talked about where uh, you know, she'll slit her throat as a rebellion against the evil man behind the music producing industry. And, you know, it, it's not a gore video, so it's not, you know, all this blood coming out, but instead it's flowers and uh, different representations. You sort of had that B story with the boy uh, it, cautiously exploring his, you know, maybe uh, interests that aren't being appreciated in the environment he's in. So could you please tell me a little bit about like coming up with these representations that aren't exactly literal and you know i imagine you had to do a lot of reading through the lyrics with your creative team and thinking what what would work right here well i think like a lot of it was just also just like again like chatting with everybody and talking about like hey like you know what is like a visual representation of identity because if you want to really break down like a lot of um I guess, especially like for me, like working on this project was um, the theme of identity, right? It's about like finding who you are in maybe like a world you don't necessarily fully belong or, or, or just like knowing that like maybe like with like a bit of like loss of innocence as you're growing up. It's like, you know, I feel like especially with at first, you know, you're growing up and you're talking about, hey, um, like well, well like i'm trying to think like what's the word like hey like not like you when you start to i feel like it's like when you first start realizing like not the entire world is black and white you know um i know emma definitely like has experienced like a bit of like a loss of faith or i'm not sure if it's like a loss of faith but like she definitely like uh you know used to go to church and all that kind of stuff before like kind of questioning her some of her beliefs going up you know, and so like, I, I just feel like a lot of that is like, just like, that's almost like a universal theme that um, I feel like everybody can kind of relate to, you know? So it's just more about like, hey, like, yeah, like sure, there are these like poetic like um, values, right? But like, to me, I always wanted to, like, to make sure that like, you know, sure, like that's just like, these are cool imagery, these are certain imagery, but like, it's like not necessarily we wanted to like assign something, but the idea is just like, if could somebody uh, be watching this video they might take a different meaning from um, something that like I might, something so literal, you know what I mean? So I feel like there was definitely like a bit of that kind of choice into it as well. Yeah, well, it, it definitely works. Yeah. And, I, and I like what you, what you said about how um, you want to keep these sort of ideas clear, but the execution open to interpretation. Um, now, uh, sort of branching off that a little bit, you, all these beautiful shots uh i mentioned the flower one uh, you've got the one where she's laying in the water uh, is there any shot that you think you're particularly uh fond of or you have like a favorite shot that you're like wow this turned out so perfect uh well it, it was very interesting because like, we had like a super ambitious day so like i was always thinking mm-hmm. like okay we got this ready but like what do we got to do to like make the next like three setups work and you know so we almost like had to get out of a way to like okay so like now i got this but now the scheduling and we only have like our extra so like i like i feel like no matter what you do as a filmmaker you always kind of get a bit of, of that in my mindset you know but honestly i feel like one of my favorite moments of this entire piece is honestly just like like a couple of moments at the very end where um she was you know 
having this whole like heart to heart with herself in the mirror and like expressing her frustrations. And it's like the only time where she's a, alone in a video that's like not in a fantasy land, where, which is like the pseudo reality where she's like in her dressing room. And I just hold, I just felt like that, man, that entire vibe and a performance and the mood and everything. And like playing with like a bit of nostalgia, like we lean on like a bit of like Stranger Things and like, you know, some of like the 90s movies and especially with that room, like it just like felt like it was like a, you know, like almost like a timeless kind of spot. You know, I just felt like that was really, really cool. And that was actually one of my favorite setups, even though it didn't have like the, had like the longest time to shoot it and everything. So Yeah, it, it was a really good room. It, and it, to me, it sort of felt like we were in a part, like a part of her mind, you know, she's exploring these thoughts that are being visually, uh, it's kind of where like, the reality is being played with a little bit as far as what we're seeing. And like you talked about, like your references there with the mirror. So we're definitely kind of like diving into her mind, and it's it's really quite incredible what you guys were able to achieve. It's interesting that I th that you would that pick out that scene because you know I th thought maybe you would go for something that was like uh, uh, maybe like a little bit more like uh, I imagine <laughs> you think like the water shot because that's probably more the most complicated shot, and sometimes the most complicated shots you're the happiest with because of how complicated they were. Um, but let's move on to that one. Um, yeah. What are some of the challenges you had to fill? I, what was it like a kiddie pool? <laughs> how, how did you guys put that together? So um, our mastermind, like behind the whole like art department, uh, was Stephen Trivieri, and he was just like a really experienced sort of production designer. And we talked about some of our ideas, and it was honestly we were walking around like in the lawn of a pool, or sorry, we were, like we were walking around lawns where we saw this like beautiful, um, like. I guess like this bush like uh, overgrowth like plant thing where I guess like if you like go to some of the videos like maybe like 2.30 or something like that you saw all these like um, there was like a lot of green a lot of whites and it was at that point where like a lot of the color palettes was just really on point so we felt like oh what if we sort of like use what we got uh, around here and kind of lean into you know that you know, like lean into this idea and this color. And so we kind of just like built our set around it. So he ended up finding this like pretty big kiddie pool, um, <laughs> painting, painting the bottom black to be able to like kind of like accomplish a lot of these things. And we also had to like really watch our camera angles. And like, it was like literally like, as soon as you like even tilt over a little second or like push in or pull back a little bit, like you would see like certain areas. And of course, like we were able to like use a bit of like post-production to kind of like hide some of that or like extend the black. But it was just like, just like very kind of like, oh yeah, like we definitely were, you know, trying to make certain things happen. But um, the mix of like natural, the mix of like natural, I guess like, uh, vegetation and versus like what we bled, brought in it just kind of like worked exactly with what we were going for but I actually have like a hilarious story because it, it was like one of those moments where like okay so like we we're working on this biggest art setup and obviously that takes the most time and we finally get to the end of the day and then like based on certain things we're like oh shit like um you know this like whole um way we needed to light it was that we had to bring like you know this entire like massive light onto the stream everything but of course, um, you know, we weren't really allowed to do that because we had to like stay in like the church property. And so after like so many ways of figuring it out because like so much of like that scene also like wouldn't necessarily work because, you know, if you're going for a painterly light and stuff like that, a lot of it has to be at a certain angle. It can't be like backy, it can't be silhouette it can't be too frontal. I was like, everything gets washed out, right? And also had this like certain inky quality, like it needed, just really needed to be this like side three quarters thing and having our like, model looking like towards like you know that towards that direction right it was just always like like you know there, there were places you could just put a light but it just like didn't exactly work and like i think um one of our lighting team had the genius idea of like okay well what if we just like park the big ass truck over here rig like our bounce onto the truck and put the truck in the right direction shine like you know we we essentially like emptied our entire like lighting truck full of like of all the HMIs and then like we were able to like fly another like um I think it was like a I believe it was like um ultra bounds into light grid so um we made a massive book light um so for I guess like the audiences that like doesn't know what we're talking about like a book light is just like when you take a lot of light into a bounce and then after you the bouncing area you have to diffuse it again and it have like and essentially like um, multiple sources of lighting and all that kind of stuff just kind of turns into this like one nice like sidey painterly like you know I, I almost like describe it as like inky kind of 
quality it's almost like sticky like when you when you get closer to it you get like a lot of like that quality but then like when you move away from it it doesn't kind of just get get to you you know so that was very important i think for me to kind of like accomplish like a certain visual and to top it off it that had to be slow motion that had to be had the right quality you need to be able to go like you know really wide to really tight because everything's moving so that took like a lot of i guess like um creative rigging but very um proud of the lighting team to be able to like kind of like come up with like ideas and I feel like at the end of the day like I think I think like that's all filmmaking is it's like you have like you need to do you create this like grammar of like the way you tell your story and then you just like kind of like problem solve until you figure it out right yeah you know you, you can't build the set you can't drill any holes but you can <laughs> you can build a wall out of a truck and uh and work from there we'll put a bounce out of a truck and so that, that i mean that's something i've never done before, <laughs> but totally gonna keep that in the arsenal in the future I guess. as everyone should wow um let's talk about uh some of the transitions uh, a yeah. lot of really interesting transitions of course you have character wipes uh you have wipes happening with the wall you have uh following subjects like a flower falling into the next scene um please walk me through some of the ideas behind these transitions and uh, were all these transitions sort of planned out? Were any of them like spur of the moment inspiration? So most of it was very planned out. Um, and like, we actually like went out of our way, for example, like when we see like the, uh, the, the, the B story with like the little altar boy, like walking through and like looking through a window, right? Well, geographically in that church, like most of that stuff like wasn't exactly there. But it was very important to us with like a screen direction because I guess like the biggest thing that we had talked about was like um, there there were just like certain beats and scenes and visuals that like we wanted to you know hit right and so like that was just very important and because of the way the the entire story flows like we wanted to make it feel like you know yeah it's like this just this one world but there's like all these things it's like I I feel like the like again like another basic idea is just like you know when you walk into a room you sort of like look around and you like look at people around you and see and sure like they're all here and they're kind of like focused on one thing but you just like don't know what what everybody's story is there before they got there you know so for us it's just very important to almost like create like our own like logic into the flow so like we paid careful attention into like okay well this window is perfect the look is perfect but like based on the geography of this place like we couldn't physically move our camera this way so like maybe this wouldn't work or like um okay so how do we transition to like a fantasy sequence into like going like almost overboard into the whole like dream sequence but how do we bring that back or like hey like you know how do we bring the ultra boy story with like the main story and all that kind of stuff so like a lot of it was more just like looking at like a potential perfect location and then like you just almost have to like take a step back in a second and just be like hey like don't worry about like how the geography is of like your current location is you just got to be like okay how does it look like on screen and you know how do we trans smoothly like transition between most of the scenes because again that's just like i think like it's mostly also a taste thing with like em and i that like you know i'm just like sometimes not the biggest fan of like oh like you have like a story and suddenly like oh like you just see like a band performing and that's just like kind of how it's happening right so to me that's just like was something that I was just like really down for with what they're going for because again everything was supposed to be like at this like, you know, if you got to, like, I guess, like, if we did our jobs correctly, it's just supposed to be, like, oh, like, yeah, they're part of this, like, um, I guess, like, a, this chapel or going to church on a Sunday, but there's, like, this whole other world that you don't quite see. Yeah, you sort of have to build uh, your own set with the pieces that you have. So, you know, uh, maybe the boy comes out of one door, and maybe he's coming out of the closet, like an actual closet, but in the film world... It, but yeah, but in the film world, he's coming from a completely different room, right? You have to sort of put these puzzle pieces together, or like, like you said, you know, he might be looking out a window that just looks at a brick wall, but in your world, that window looks down at a yard, right? Yeah, so again, we just have to, like, be very careful on, like, how we selected um, the locations that we had to you know work with and then i guess like just like it's like one of those like, like i guess like i call like one of like the rules of basic exposure it's just like okay well this is the one thing you can't control let's like try to make everything else around it work for this like one thing you know what i mean so we, we, we definitely had to do a lot of that kind of stuff in the transitions and also we thought of like well how do we like make certain visuals really like smack you in the face and how do we like make everything smoothly you know so 
that's how you know you've really succeeded as a cinematographer when your audience feels like they've been truly smacked in the face. <laughs> I definitely, I, I, I love that. I don't know about that, but <laughs> maybe, maybe I guess, like, yeah. <laughs> Was there any particular, like, standout moments from the entire experience? Oh. <sighs> I mean, I guess like, I guess like, I guess like we definitely had like, you know, of course, again, like with everything that you work on, there's always, um, you know, you take your wins where you can get it. And sometimes like you maybe try to, I guess, like maybe you like had a gamble or you had an idea and you weren't sure if it's going to work out or everything like that. I honestly think like for me is like from like just like a technical like camera nerding side, it's just like the fact that like they were able to uh, figure out the lighting at the very end by like literally rigging a bounce to a truck instead of like having a frame on the thing like that to me was like just so freaking cool yeah. but of course i know like to the average viewer it's like yeah like whatever right? but like just like the amount of like i guess like i guess like the things that were like stacked up against it but we were still able to like make something happen like that was really cool but yeah i don't know like i, I feel like the other thing was just like me freaking out about like oh like what if like it's supposed to be like a day scene or it's supposed to be a night scene uh or it's supposed to have like this like moment and then like you know, when you plan to, like, you obviously plan to shoot the scene at, like, Magic Hour or whatever and suddenly show up based on the scheduling. Oh, it's, like, midnight and you have to, like, make something work, you know what I mean? You have to so, literally create the sun. Sometimes, right? <laughs> and, like, that was actually one of the things it was supposed to be, like, an early afternoon scene in her sort of dressing room. But, like, we ended up, like, having just, like, these lights outside because uh, we couldn't see, like, certain details. But it, to me, it, like, almost worked because, like, it was just, like, added to the whole, like, artificialness of, mm -hmm. of like the story like you had to like be something and like you know if it didn't look like more like like in her dressing room scene like it almost like looked like a set and that's like that's like always one of the things i noticed when i like like watch videos and photos it's just like looking out like at like the out of focus windows and what's out there you know but people are like yeah it has like definitely that vibe a little bit too but i'm just thinking like well you know if you're playing with the idea like everything's sort of artificial you're putting on a like a like a face uh, to behave in like a certain way or a certain identity in like a certain situation you know what I mean I just feel like the little things like that like all the choices that like reinforces your theme um, which are actually like a happy little accident we saw that and we're like oh like is it okay if it's dark but like hey like that just kind of works because like sometimes like that's just what a film set looks like and what if we just like made like her dressing room look like a set so like even if she is alone um, performing this thing and maybe she's just talking to herself or like having this like moment of like a like a breakdown or something but like that's still a performance you know what I mean like that's still a stage that you had to go or maybe she's like putting on this performance for herself like you never really quite know but just like these little things that naturally reinforce the theme of like our message is like what I'm sort of all about and I'm like I love these little happy little accidents that happen. <laughs> and 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 that's that's one of the best part about being a filmmaker is is you know finding those sort of happy little accidents when you have a plan and then you're surprised by how it just turns out and maybe it just gets a little bit better. Uh, one last question that I'm sure a lot of people are wondering. Uh, did Jesse contribute any creative ideas to the project? Did she have an idea of like, oh, could we try something like this or maybe something small? I'm pretty sure like a lot of the whole like, her thing was actually like probably through a create like a collaboration with her and Peter, her creative director, and talked about like, hey, what is our vibes of, you know, like what it, it would be really cool if we like did some of this, you know? And I feel like a lot of it is just kind of like they have that conversation. And then like uh, our director Emma probably like kind of like takes some of those ideas and like almost like furthers it, you know what I mean? But like so I'm pretty sure like a lot of that was just like also sort of like in her mind, in her own like mind child too. And I feel like the biggest thing was also just like clearly, you know, this is a very personal song, very personal experience. And I think like our, our biggest toughness was just, was just like, yeah, like I wanted to have this moment where like this whole scene where I'm like scrolling through my phone, but it's like all the most meanest, like terrible comments. Cause like, yeah, even though like no matter who you are, no matter what you're doing in life, right? Like there's still a part of you that's human. And it's like, just like people say that, you know, sticks, sticks and stones will never like kind of break your, it will break your bones, right? But like, you know, like a lot of these comments, I'm sure it gets to people, right? So I just feel like there was like a lot of bravery and ideas just to put um, her genuine self out there, you know? And she was just like an absolute pleasure to work with, totally like just gets the vibes too, but like also is down to kind of chat a little bit about like her experiences. So honestly, like, I just felt like we, we just have to like do our very best to make sure that like, 
you know, we could, we can like make that happen, right? Yeah, beautifully said. Now, we're going to bring it to a close. One thing that I want to ask you about and bring some attention to is uh, you are a proud member of Sporus, uh, Sporus Co., and it's described as a network dedicated to uplifting cinematographers and camera crew of multi-ethnic backgrounds around the world. Uh, would you like to chat, to chat a little bit about that? Yeah, so it's actually like an organization that I recently found with the whole like uh, movement that like started out about like a year or two. But the whole idea was just like, hey, like let's just try to, you know, get more sort of like um, people behind the camera, behind the creative type choices that that kind of, you know, make make certain choices happen, right? Because like, if you, if you think about it, like if, if like, oh, like all the creative members of a certain stories are, you know, of like a certain type of people or a certain race or whatever, right? You generally kind of see a lot of certain like type of stories constantly being greenlit. So I just think that like represent, representation and everything is definitely very important, especially like in my work and stuff like that. And I just like love the type of, um, stuff that they're about and i just yeah i just think it's very important to have like sort of genuine stories being like you know or like um cultural stories being told by creators of that culture sometimes you know it's just like i just think that like more of diversity and voices behind the camera leads just like a whole variety of stories and you know representation matters representation truly does matter and if you want to check out some of the wonderful work Sporus Co. is doing, the easiest way, I think, would be to follow their Instagram, which is at Sporus Co. That's S-P-O-R-A-S-C-O, Sporus Co. If you would like to keep up with Jack, I encourage you to check out his awesome website, which is jackyanchen.com. It was a pleasure talking to Jack, and I certainly hope you enjoyed learning about the makings of this music video. I certainly love listening to Jack's interesting way of describing lighting as this inky quality he was trying to achieve. If you enjoyed your listen, please support the podcast by leaving a positive rating, and thank you so much for listening all the way to the end. I've been Eden Ocean, and this has been Film Insights.